Good evening, my colleagues, my friends in Israel. Good afternoon to all our friends in the East Coast of the States. And uh, good morning to those in the West Coast of the States and uh, North America, South America. Good uh, evening to our friends from Europe. Uh, I'm Shai Ben Yehuda, the Director of International Relations of Yad Vashem. And uh, I'm very pleased to welcome you all tonight for the special session, the special presentation by Nurit Davidson about the last descendants, the last remnants, who are uh, survivors, the sole survivors from their families who lost their life during the war, and mainly during the War of Independence. Tonight in Israel, we just finished the opening ceremony near the Kotel, the Welling Wall, for the opening of the Memorial Day to the soldiers who died during the wars. Many of them were survivors. Almost a thousand survivors died during the wars. And from them, a special group, which Nurit Davidson will share with us their stories in a few minutes, were those who came from the ashes, the last remnants from their families, and died during the war here. Nurit Davidson is working as one of the leaders in the International School for Holocaust Studies since 2005, and from 2012 to 2016, she was the director of the Gandel program, training the teachers from Australia, in Yad Vashem and in Australia. And since 2016, she is the coordinator and the head of the special section of the department that dealing for with teachers in Israel, training teachers in Israel, and she is responsible for all the, all the internal service of, of teachers in Israel. So I'm pleased to introduce Nurit Davidson, and I'm sure we will all have tonight a very moving presentation by Nurit. Nurit, thank you for accepting the request and uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shaya. Um, it is a great uh, privilege and honor to talk to you um, tonight. Um, shalom and good evening. Uh, my name is Nurit. And um, today, um, I'll just um, share my presentation. Today, as um, Shaya said, we will talk about last uh, descendants. As Shaya mentioned in his um, opening uh, remarks, um, an hour ago, um, we started um, to mark Israeli Remembrance Day to um, the soldiers who killed during uh, defending the Jewish homeland. And today we will talk about last descendants. Last descendants uh, were um, Holocaust survivors who survived um, the Holocaust alone. They were the last descendants of their families. They survived without um, brothers or sisters, parents, or children. Immigrated to um, Israel after the Holocaust and killed here um, while defending the newborn uh, Jewish homeland. As Shaya said in the Independence War, more than half of the soldiers um, were Holocaust survivors, and more than thousands of them killed during the battles. Today, we will talk about last descendants, and we are talking about 144 Holocaust survivors 
that were the last descendants of, the, of their families. Here on the, on the screen, you can see 18 uh, photos of them. Um, but I would like to start this presentation I mean, a different, uh, in a unique event that happened in Jerusalem in uh, November 17, 1949. This event was the first military uh, funeral that was held here in Jerusalem on Mount Herzl. Mount Herzl is the military cemetery of Jerusalem and one of the biggest uh, cemeteries for soldiers in Israel. And what you see now on the screen, the short clip and the photos next to the clip are the photos um, from the first funeral on this mountain, Mount Herzl, um, that is right next to Yad Vashem. And what's unique in this funeral, yes, in November 17, 1949, is that the soldiers um, that was buried at that day killed um, almost a year and a half before this funeral. As you can see, thousands of people, uh, th thousands of Israelis uh, arrived to Jerusalem to share a respect to show respect to those hundreds of soldiers who killed while defending Jerusalem at the independence war. The soldier, again, hundreds of soldiers killed in different battles around Jerusalem, but mainly in two very famous and heroic battles. One battle was the Latrun battle, and the second one, and this is the battle that I would like to focus today, is the battle. Um, in Gush Etzion. Um, what you see now on the screen is uh, the mass grave of the soldiers and the warriors that killed in Gush Etzion during the independence war in Mount Herzl today. So the battle in Gush Etzion, again one of the heroic battles in the history of the state of Israel, start right after uh, the United Nations um, Constitution Plan. When uh, the United Nations published the Constitution Plan, there are 30 um, settlements, 30 Jewish settlements that find themselves on, our, on Arab soil according to the Constitution Plan. Four of those settlements were uh, in Gush Etzion, the south to Jerusalem, four small kibbutzim. Um, you can see I marked um, the kibbutzim on the map. Um, four small kibbutzim, the main kibbutz were, uh, was Kfar Etzion, and those kibbutzim, a day after the partition plan, um, find, basically uh, remain on Arab soil. There is a discussion among those kibbutzim if they should stay on ground or evacuate themselves towards uh, Jerusalem. And they deciding in, in an unbelievable decision, almost like Metzada decision, they decided to remain on the ground and become basically the shield of Jerusalem. Those kibbutzim are basically defending Israel, defending Jerusalem, sorry. They evacuating all the mothers and the children from Gush Etzion and the young um, singles and male remained on ground. And those four kibbutzim basically slowly became a military basis to fight for uh, the new land of Israel. The battle in Gush Etzion is, is a horrible battle. Um, half a year of different attacks. Um, and Gush Etzion was captured a day before the declaration of the State of Israel on the 4th of Iyar, the eighth month in the Hebrew calendar. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today evening will start the 4th of Iyar, the date that Gush Etzion was captured, become later the uh, formal date 
for the Israeli Remembrance Day for soldiers who were killed during defending their homeland. 240 soldiers were killed in Gush Etzion. More than half of them were Holocaust survivors. 15 of them were last descendants to their families, which is almost 10% of the entire number of last descendants. Seven of those 15 were women. And I've been asked to, to have this conversation with you today. Um, I thought that we cannot ignore this date and we cannot ignore this story that the 4th of Yar, the date of today, is not the formal Remembrance Day. It, it's the actual Remembrance Day to the battle in Gush Etzion. So the least we can do today is to tell a few stories of last descendants that were killed in the battle of Gush Etzion. Hear their stories, try to understand the complexity of last descendants, the complexity of their stories, the, complex, the complexity of remembering their story, and to honor uh, all of them tonight together. So the first story uh, that I choose, now each um, story here, I think symbolize um, some of the complexity of last, uh, last descendants, some of the complexity of their stories. And I choose um, to start with the story of Moshe Friedrich. Up until 2006, we didn't know a lot about Moshe Friedrich. We knew that he was born in 1923, that he was Holocaust survivor, last descendants to his family. We knew that he immigrated to Israel in 1946 and that he killed in 1947 in Gush Etzion. In 2006, in a random conversation, family conversation, suddenly um, we, we discovered many details about Moshe that we didn't know, we didn't know before. And Moshe's story basically tied into Shoshana Rabinovich's story. Now, this is a little bit com com complicated story, so bear with me. Um, I hope I will be able to explain the complexity of the story. So in this image, you see the Holocaust survivor Shoshana Rabinovich. Shoshana Rabinovich was also a last uh, descendant to her family. One day, Shoshana, Shoshana's daughter, sitting with her daughter, yes, Shoshana, granddaughter, they are sitting together in their house in Israel um, next to a family photo album. And Shoshana's daughter tell her daughter, Come, show, let me show you some picture of your grandmother Shoshana. And she's telling her daughter that her grandmother Shoshana was Holocaust survivor and that she doesn't have any photos from her childhood. She doesn't have any photos about her life before the Shoah. The first photo that they have on grandma Shoshana is from the displaced person camp in Germany. And this is the first photo that they see. They continue to um, see the, the album and the photo. And then um, the granddaughter of Shoshana asks her mother, who is this person who stand right next to grandma Shoshana? Who is this man? And her mother tell her, I don't know very much about him. Grandma Shoshana said that his name was Moshe and that he was killed in the battle of Gush Etzion. So the daughter and the granddaughter of Shoshana reaching out the archive in Gush Etzion and ask the archive if they have more information about this young boy named Moshe who was a great friend of their grandmother and killed in the battle of Gush Etzion. And when they are contacting the archive, they understand that the only person 
that can give some information about this last descendant, Moshe Friedrich, is their grandmother, Shoshana Radinovich. And thanks to Shoshana, today we have uh, many more details to, to say about, uh, about Moshe. We know that Moshe, born in 1923, in the town named Slomniki in Poland. He was born to a religious um, and very respectful, respectful family in this village. He was a great student. He learned um, the Talmud, the Torah, and at the age of 18, despite the fact that his parents didn't want him to leave their home, he decided to go to Yeshivat Bernovich. And he is leaving his parents' house at the age of 13. Later, he will move to the great yeshiva in Lublin, Yeshivat Chachme Lublin, and will study there. During the Shoah, Moshe had been through a lot. He moved from camp to camp. He had a horrible Holocaust story. He was liberated in 1945 in Buchenwald. Uh, immediately at the end of the war, he goes back to his hometown. He's searching for his family, and he understands that he survived alone. No parents, no brothers, no sisters. Well, he's traveling around Europe. At the end, he arrived to Germany to a dis uh, displaced person camp. There, he met Shoshana. In this camp, he became a madrich, a leader of these young men and women, like this group, um, that are um, willing to immigrate to Israel as soon as they can. And they start together their journey towards Israel. Um, the journey is a long journey. They are staying more than a year in a displaced person camp in Cyprus. After that, they uh, arriving to Israel, but they are in Atlit uh, for several months. And after Atlit, Shoshana and Moshe ways are separated. Uh, Shoshana moving to um, a kibbutz of a Shomer Atzair, and Moshe um, is going to Kfar Etzion. Moshe and Shoshana will meet, like met, <laughs> um, uh, and um, one more time, when Shoshana came to visit him in Kfar Zion, Moshe sent Shoshana this photo after her visit in Kfar Zion. It's written in Hebrew, um, but you can see here it's written Kfar Zion. I don't know if you see the, um, this, um, but here it's written Kfar Zion. This is the date, the Hebrew date. He writes with warm reg uh, regards um, to Shoshana for coming and visiting me in Kfar Etzion. And according to the date, he sent this photo to Shoshana um, five months uh, before he was killed in the Battle of Gush Etzion. And I think the story of Moshe and the fact that for many years we didn't know anything about, about him. We, we had this picture, we knew when he was born, and nothing more. There is something in this story that symbolizes some, some many of the stories of, of the last descendants. Yes, 144 last descendants, for many of them. We do not have a photo, we do not have biography, we have no idea where they were born, what happened to them during the Holocaust. And more than that, since they were last descendants, sometimes there is no one to give us this, the information. And therefore, there is no one that will remember them. They were sole survivors. The next story is um, the story of uh, Shoshana Lenschner Tenenbaum. Shoshana was born in 1923 to Margalit and Yitzhak Tenenboim. 
She was born in Radomsk, Poland. Um, she was also born to a religious uh, family, religious and Zionist family. She was educated uh, in a religious and Zionist education. She was a member in a Zionist movement named Ashomer Adati. Um, she was very active and, and again, very, very Zionist. When the Shoah broke out, broke out um, Shoshana and her family sent to the ghetto. And at the end of the war, Shoshana uh, survived alone. No parents, no brothers, no sisters. Immediately after the war, Shoshana joined different groups and hachsharot and kibbutzim in order to prepare herself for um, the immigration to Israel. Like Moshe, she is moving from different places in Europe and she arrived to a different um, displaced uh, person camp in Germany. In that camp, she met Naftali Lentner and they got married on Lagba Omer. Yes, we will all celebrate Lagba Omer a few weeks from today. Um, they got married in Germany in the camp uh, but after four months, um, they need to sleep. They need, um, he needs to stay in Germany to continue his Zionist work in Germany. And she had the opportunity to immigrate to Israel. Um, and this is what she's doing. Immediately when she arrived to Israel, she's um, going um, to Kfar Etzion. From the minute that Shoshana arrived to Kfar Etzion, she feel part from the kibbutz. Yes, she, um, I uh, reminding you that Kfar Etzion was the main kibbutz among those four small kibbutzim of Gush Etzion. Um, she feel at home and she, she is taking part in all the activities of the kibbutz. But unfortunately, two months after she arrived to the kibbutz, the battle, on Gush Etzion, in Gush Etzion begin. Shoshana is doing a paramedic course in, in Kfar Etzion and become a paramedic during the battle. During her all staying in Kfar Etzion, she is writing letters to some relatives that she have in, in Tel Aviv. One of the letters, and I will not read the whole letter, you can I read it while I'm talking. And she is writing to them, it is a mistake to give up during such a critical moment. Um, Shoshana, uh, it was clear for Shoshana that she is staying on ground. The people of Gush Etzion fully understood that this is a, a battle for life or a death. Um, they knew that this decision is like a Ritzada decision that that this battle is going to be a, a hard battle and, and she is writing. It is a mistake to give up during such a critical moment. I am skipping a bit and she continue and write, freedom and, and independence is achieved through action and victim. I am helping this. I feel good with myself there will come a bright and clear day and we will have it. Um, this is her words to the relative that sitting in Tel Aviv, she is in Gush Etzion during the heavy battles of the independence war. But unfortunately, on the 4th of Yar, the day that the Gush were captured, Shoshana, are hiding in this building under the bunkers. You can see in the picture, in the picture on the screen. They are in the bunker in this building. The Arab people um, surrounding them, they could not enter the building and therefore they exploding the building. The building collapsed on all the people that in the bunkers and all of them were killed. Now, if you remember the beginning of the presentation, I told you that in the Battle of Gush Etzion, 
um, killed 15 last descendants. Seven of them were women. Those seven women, including Shoshana, all of them were in this bunker and all of them killed at the same day. Tonight, we will mark the Remembrance Day of those young last descendants, seven women that chose to stay in Gush Etzion after the horrible experience of the Shoah. They decide to stay in the bunker and they died together with the rest of the soldiers. All the people who killed in the battles remain on, on, uh, on enemy territory, as I said, almost a year and a half. And only in November 1949, um, the State of Israel succeed under a complicated operation to arrive to those enemy territory and collect the remains of those brave soldiers. Her husband, Shoshana's husband, said she didn't live to see with her own eyes the bright day that befell our nation, the delicate soul that dreamed a pure dream uh, and whose family change were disconnected. Shoshana killed um, in the Battle of Gush Etzion, and as her husband said, the chain of her family was disconnected. Shoshana was the last descendant of her family. What you see now is the monument for last descendants, the home that was once there and is no longer, the home that could have been built and will never be. They were the last descendants and no more. You can see this monument in the shape of home, a, a, a ruin, a, a broken home, the home that was once there and is no longer, and the home that could have been built and will never be. And I would like to end the presentation with the words of Shoshana. Those 144 soldiers who had this pure dream of freedom, of living in, in, in a free country, to have a bright and clear day, were killed while achieving this dream. I feel that we today, me, Nurit, is living their dream. I live today a bright and clear day in a free country. And they paid, they, they paid with their life after everything that they've been through, after this, the horrible horrors of the Shoah, after the biggest uh, tragedy that happened to our nation. They immigrated to here as some of them as refugees, immediately recruited the army and pay with their own life in order to achieve this pure dream that we live today. And they think that the least we can do today at the night of the fourth of Yar is to light a candle and to commemorate and remember them and their story. They have no one else to remember them. They were the last descendants of their families. Um, and again, this is the least I think we all can do today. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Norit, for this uh, very moving uh, presentation. Uh, it's hard to say anything uh, following your presentation. 
I just want to end sharing with you that I grew up uh, with uh, neighbors in the kibbutz that uh, was a family of uh, two daughters with a mother, but without a husband. They didn't have a father. Her father was one of the Holocaust survivors who were killed in uh, Kfar Etzion, in the Gush Etzion region during the 48th war. So from the first day, I remember myself, for me, the story of Gush Etzion was this in my blood. I heard it every day, nearly every day. I saw it together. And as was said, each of us in Israel, not only in Israel, we know many stories of them. We remember many of those who died and we have to remember all of them and we have to honor all of them. And I would like to thank all of you, 200 uh, participants of this evening, of this uh, session, who joined us here in Israel, remembering the soldiers who paid with their life to ensure that we will have our independent state. There is a phrase that Eretz Israel niknet be surim. The state of Israel can be bought only with suffering, with a lot of suffering. We are going to remember this suffering for the next 24 hours until tomorrow evening. But from tomorrow evening, from tomorrow night, as Nurit said, we are going to see the bright sky, we are going to see the beauty of the state of Israel, and we shall celebrate another Independence Day of the state of Israel. But we shall never forget what was the prize in order for us to be able to continue to celebrate. So thank you for joining us for this very moving session. And we want to, I want to wish all of you a meaningful remembering day, a meaningful Holocaust, a, a meaningful Memorial Day for the soldiers. And don't forget to light a candle in their memory. Thank you for all of you for joining this session. Have a good evening and good afternoon wherever you are. Nurit, thank you very, very much for this very moving session. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. It was my privilege to be here with you. Thank you.